Okay, 12 o'clock rock, we're back. I'm Jay Fidel. Welcome back to Community Matters. I'm your host today, and our guest today are Mary Cook, wife of Sam Cook, who died last year, and their daughter Kathy Cook, and friends and great supporters of ThinkTech. Now, they published a book and opened a gallery in Manoa, celebrating Manoa and the Manoa Heritage Center on Manoa Road. There was a celebration two weeks ago, celebrating the opening of the gallery and the publication of the book, Paintings, Prints, and Drawings of Hawaii from the Sam and Mary Cook Collection. That's the name. The book is really, really, really beautiful, and we'll take a look at some of the items in the collection and in the book with Mary and Kathy today. We'll find out more about the collection, the Manoa Heritage Center, the gallery, and why Mary and Sam Cook wanted to do this. And of course, we'll take a look at Hawaiian history, and that's the center of all of it. The book and the collection are important, especially in a time when Hawaiian history, culture, and legacy are extremely important and increasingly important. This is something we all need to know about and learn about. What they have done and are doing is a great benefit to the community. Thanks for being here, Mary Cook and Kathy Cook. It's great to have you at Think Tank. Hi, welcome, Jay. Great to be here. <laughs> well, I really want to find out, you know, what motivated you and what is happening here. Can we talk first, Mary, about the collection itself? When did it start? Why did it start? And what did you do to create it? Sam is the one that started it when we were first married, you know, 55 years ago. And uh, he had just had a wonderful discerning eye and a love of collecting. So he collected for 55 years. And the book, three years ago, he saw a book that David Forbes had just finished. Let's see if I can get that book. That's the book, okay? It's a beauty. And if you open it up, you will see just at any page the most beautiful paintings and great prose, great prose. Yeah, David's a great historian. David Forbes David, wrote the book. Yeah. David. So he saw this book that David had just completed three years ago, and he said, I've got to have one for my <laughs> collection. So he quick called up David and called up Barbara Pope, who designed the book, yeah. and got them started. And so this is really his legacy that yeah, and what's interesting is the book is a is a collection which you know identifies itself as a collection. It has uh, it has catalog numbers and all that, but it's also a book with with prose, with history, and it connects all the work you know works that are in the collection. So you get it both ways. You you get it as a collection, but you also get it as a historical statement of what happened in Hawaii and why these pictures express that history. Makes yes. it very very valuable. I mean, it's so interesting because he starts with. Captain Cook, not related, uh, came in 1778 with his artist, and that those prints are in the in the collection, and goes all the way through to Greg Pye in 2012, <laughs> and Greg Pye has a kamani tree on his uh, in his painting of Hanalei Valley, and that same kamani tree is on the cover of the book uh -huh. in a painting done by Howard Hitchcock a hundred years earlier. So uh, this is my favorite of all the paintings. Uh, uh, and accordingly it's uh, on the cover. Yeah. yeah. Sam found that in Kentucky of all places. Someone told him that uh, a guy had this painting for sale and so he called him up and uh, they sent a slide. No. Uh, internet in those days yeah, yeah. and we said ah oh, gotta have it uh, i was born on Kauai, so you know hanalei has a oh, real sure. soft spot a in special my heart. romantic place yeah. yeah so uh he it sounds like he went everywhere or you guys went everywhere anywhere to get uh, pieces for the collection you didn't hesitate to go to the mainland and i suppose mm -hmm. you had many sources that you approached uh, to get these uh, members of the collection. Yeah, we went to Europe and found things in Paris and London. And, wow. And Sam had a dealer in Australia that he got quite a few paintings. A serious from. collection. Yeah. Now, what about Kathy? You were growing up when all this was happening. Um, you saw the collection being assembled. Um, what was your reaction and what was your participation, Kathy? Well, my father would show me every new piece he got. And um, early on, I developed a deep love for art and art history. And I think that had to do with my parents' love of Hawaiian art. Uh, Let's no. talk about the history for a minute. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. okay? The history is definitely part of the book. And if you're going to appreciate the, wor the works of art in the book, you need to know about the history. So um, assembling a collection is an educational experience. Oh, definitely. You, know, you learn everything. You know David, everything. David, I've yeah. learned so much from the book from David. <laughs> yeah. You know, there are pictures of little churches in uh, this first, one of the first pictures in the book uh, done by Barnfield of early Honolulu uh, from Sand Island. And there's a little church right here with two steeples. And it looks like it's right downtown. And I said, David, where is that church now? <laughs> it burned down during the Chinatown fire. So you have to know this. Yeah. And David te teaches you all yeah. of this in the book. Yeah. So it reminds really me of my fun. friend uh, uh, Fred Gregory, who I was out in the service with. And he was friendly with Twig Smith. And they were, they were both stamp collectors, you know. And they, they bought and sold stamps, uh, Hawaiian covers for years and years and years, and both of them had a big collection. But in doing that, in acquiring these memorabilia, these artworks, these stamps and, and, um, and uh, covers, you learn everything about history. And, and Fred did the same thing. He wrote a book about Hawaiian history based on his collection. So it's, it's a great contribution um, to, you know, just another way of looking at Hawaiian history. Let's take a look at some of your slides so we can see uh -huh. some of these things first up. Um, okay. okay. Oh, oh that's, that's you and Sam. Sam and me in Sam's library. He had a beautiful library. He collected all the voyages that came to Hawaii, that, that came to the Pacific, that stopped in Hawaii, starting with Captain Cook. And uh, Many here is the, oh. here's the, are in the, book. the, the title page of, inside the book, yeah. showing that Kamani tree uh, in Hanalei. Beautiful colors, beautiful. That's uh, Heia by Floyd Sexton, where the glass bottom boat ride used to be. Uh huh. And this is Ka'ahumanu, Ka Kamehameha's favorite wife. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Uh, let's take some. Uh, let take some uh, a look at some of the pictures from the gallery now. Okay. Sure. We're going to explore the gallery. Now, the gallery is um, a brand new. It's on Manoa Road. East Manoa Road. East Manoa Road. And Lowry Avenue. And Lowry Avenue. Right across from Morning Glass Coffee. Okay, right across from Morning Glass Coffee. Okay, so you can have coffee, go to the gallery. Uh, Kathy, the gallery is your, is your baby, the gallery isn't it? Is so tell us about the gallery. Well, the gallery is newly open this year, and we feature living artists, but very much so in the tradition that mom and dad um, taught me about. You know, so our. Um, Painters and photographers primarily depict um, landscape, um, beautiful scenic landscapes of Hawaii. So it's very much a travel log for those who have traveled the islands. Um, we also sell jewelry, exquisite jewelry. We're both uh, wearing it. Samples today. right now, right here. <laughs> samples. <laughs> yeah. uh, ceramics. And oh, some we have. Yeah, this is a picture of the, the jewelry in your gallery. Yep. It's and it's a Hawaiian style jewelry too, is it? Well, most of the jewelry, the jewelry, jewelry artist Cora Yi gets most of her gems, pearls, stones from Nepal uh -huh. and neighboring countries. So very unique, very beautiful. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So um, the, in, the interesting thing to me is that you have, you have local artists, living artists, painting landscapes and, you know, scenery of Hawaii, like, like the work in the collection. Um, the, 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 nobody in this collection is alive right now, I guess, but... There yes, are two. Yes. Oh, there are two. Who yeah. are they? Chris Campbell and Greg Pye. Greg Pye, former yeah. state economist, as yes. I remember, yeah. yeah. And many yeah. other things. <laughs> <laughs> and many other many things, Many other right. endeavors. So, uh, yeah, that's very interesting, but uh, essentially, the gallery extends the whole, the whole thrust of the book forward. It extends it into living artists with, with living topics, but they're also, these artists and these topics are a study of Hawaii, right? In it's, many a, it's an extension of the book. <laughs> right. Here's Greg Pye. Greg Pye, beautiful. Yeah, love He does good way. work. Can you see that? Yeah, that's beautiful. With that Kamani tree, 100 years <laughs> after Howard Hitchcock's Kamani tree. This was, Howard Hitchcock's was 18... 
1912. 1912. And Greg, and Greg is, 2000 is 2012. 2012. Yeah. So yeah. over time, Mary, you have undoubtedly developed a very, a very refined eye to art. Well, it's really Sam's eye. Okay. Uh, he's the one that he said, I'm wanting to buy the 10 paintings that were done by, for American factories when they celebrated their 100th anniversary. <laughs> and they were done by Peter Hurd. Uh -huh. In fact, uh, Amfac uh, printed, uh, made prints of the paintings, and my folks had one that they, that, that we enjoyed when we were yeah. growing up. I think they sold them for 25 or more years. And he wanted those 10 paintings. And when American Factories sold out, the new owner wanted to put them in a uh, condo on Maui. Uh, when they went belly up, then Sam called a friend that, that American Factories had, was behooven to. And, asked him to please ask them to sell them to him, which, he, which they did. So he came home and says, he said, I bought 10 paintings, four by five feet. I oh, said, where major. are you going to put Probably those? Whole wall, for sure. <laughs> but he found room for them. That's, that's wonderful. And they line the stairway. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, you know uh, collecting art is not all that easy. You have to have that taste. You have to, ha you have to be able to determine you know, the real the real art from the maybe the not so real art and then you have to have a place for it in your world view your historical perception um, and your perception of art so what what was Sam looking for in these paintings and I you were standing by his side Mary so uh -huh. you could you could speak to this I'm, I'm saying where are you gonna put all those <laughs> <laughs> appropriate question <laughs> yes well he just loved uh, Kauai, so many of our paintings are done on uh -huh. Kauai. Uh -huh. uh, he loved history. Uh, you know, his library is just filled with books that he collected. Uh, it's wonderful Hawaiian to have history. a collection like that. Yeah. 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 We're going to take a short break, Mary uh -huh. and Kathy. Uh, when we come back, I'd like to talk about the Manoa Heritage Center and how that fits, how it fits with the book, how it fits with the collection how it fits with the gallery, so we can see this all in sort of a comprehensive way. We'll be right back in one Sounds minute. Sounds good. Aloha, my name is John Waihe'e, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to talk story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. <laughs> we're back with Mary Cook and Kathy Cook, and we're talking about uh, the collection, which is now reflected in this wonderful book uh, about the Sam and Mary uh, Cook collection. And, and we're connecting that up uh, with the Manoa Heritage Center and with the gallery on East Manoa Road. Yeah. Um, but first, I'd like to mention, as we discussed in the break, Susie Anderson. Now, we all know Susie Anderson, your relative, but there's another Susie Anderson, which I find that you guys know about. And she paints, she's played on plein air, is the style of her painting. And it's mm -hmm. very similar to Greg Pye and a lot of the work in the collection. And I asked you in the break if you knew her, because she was on the show not a week ago, and she showed us a bunch of her paintings, as she does. She, so <clears throat> what do you think of her work? And I is there a future <laughs> for her you know, in this kind of collection? Absolutely. I love her work, and I have several of her paintings in my home. And she's a delightful, bright woman. Yes, she who is. I hear is very well organized. <laughs> Maybe you know, a great contribution to our gallery someday. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the ongoing quality of the collection. Will there be new pieces added to it? No. Okay, I have no. my answer. Uh -huh. <laughs> we don't have any it's room. It's done, it's done. No room, <laughs> right. Not up the stairs because or the anywhere. the whole collection is in the house. <laughs> yeah. And right. the book is a preview of coming attractions because when it's no longer my residence, the house goes to Manoa Heritage Center uh, and it will be open to the public uh, for viewing. So, are there pieces in the collection that are not in the book? 
Yes, yes. This is just the very, you know, it's favorite. The, the top of the iceberg. Yep, yeah, top of the iceberg. So you can, like a museum, you can rotate these pieces and change them around, maybe maybe publish another book with the ones you didn't cover the first time. Yeah, he has uh, a fabulous <laughs> collection of artifacts, calabashes. He even collected a little sta um, wooden statues. Of Loved wood carvings. Wood carvings, right. Emile Janelle, who yeah. is from the Mother Lode country in California. And beautiful so, clocks. He loved his clocks. Sam must have spent a lot of time building this. You know, it must have been a tremendous passion for him. Yes, yeah. 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 And he read all those books, you know. Yeah, so that made him French. an expert in Hawaiian yeah. history. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about the transmutation, if I can call it that, of the, of the collection and the book into the Manoa Heritage uh, Center. Okay. What is it um, and how is that going to work? Well, Manoa Heritage Center was established 20 years ago. It's a nonprofit organization uh, to preserve the culture and the history of Hawaii. And it consists of a heiau, uh, Kuka o o Heau, which mm -hmm. was built by Menahune almost a thousand years ago. Uh, it's one of 14 that were did in... Did you say Menahune? Yeah. I thought you said Menahune. Yeah, I did. Okay, just checking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Built by the Menahune. I think uh, the Hawaiians believed that the first settlers came, were small people as opposed to larger ah, people that came ah, from okay. other parts of the That Polynesia. makes sense, yeah. And so I think they called them Menahune. Yeah. Um, it's the only heiau in our ahupua'a that's still intact. In Manoa. It, it's uh, kind of like the center of Manoa. Yeah, we're in the ahupua'a of Waikiki. So we can look all, all the way, way to Diamond Head yeah. from our yeah. lanai. That's right? fabulous. Yeah, and uh, we cater to school groups who are studying uh, history, Hawaiian history. Uh, they are offered to c come for free. And if they need a bus, we have a bus subsidy that we give for that. Wonderful. And then we do tours for visitors and um, local pe people as well. Mm -hmm. So you can show them the heiau. Yes. Uh, so you can show them the works in the collection. Uh, in, in the center, so to speak? Uh, no, these are all in our home. Okay, so yeah. not yet. No. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we do tours of the Heiau and the surrounding Native Hawaiian Garden. Ah, okay. When we had the Heiau uh, restored in 1993, after, when we purchased it from other people, uh, we just had to t take care of it, sure. and, knowing that you know, it was very special. It's fragile. And, and, uh, very. And yeah, so yeah. we hired Billy Field to come from the Big Island to, to restack the stones. And then we landscaped it with what would have been the native Hawaiian plants that yeah. were there originally. So I've, I've seen it. I've been there. You, know, you, you had me over once a couple yeah. of years ago. Yes, yes. And I thought it was really an interesting heiau. Uh, it was complex uh -huh. as heiaus go. And you could see a lot of things there. So. And it looks out over what is going to be our visitor education holly, which we're going to be opening sometime this coming summer. Uh, it's an extension of the Native Hawaiian Garden and then additional uh, buildings that will better accommodate the school groups. Uh, and it's LEED certified, which makes it very <laughs> special. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a, a certified historic property, too, right? Yes, The, uh, yes. the, the Tudor home, anyway. Right. The Heiau right. is on the register, the mm -hmm. National Register, as, uh -huh. as is the Tudor home, which was built 105 years ago by Sam's grandparents. So this is completely faithful to his vision. This is yes. his idea, I suppose, back when, yeah, uh -huh. to actually sort of convert or transmute um, you know, the collection and, and, and the property and the heiau into uh, the Manoa Heritage Center. Yeah. Right. Mom I'm, was the leading force behind Okay, we got that Heritage straight. Center. Don't be that's modest. Been, that's Don't been be a modest, long Mary. term. <laughs> yeah, I've always been interested in historic preservation. Yeah. So to me, this is historic preservation in being done in Manoa, which yeah, is you, very, very And you have, very done, important. in fact, done that because Manoa is pretty much a residential neighborhood, except for this sort of island in the stream, which is the Manoa uh, Heritage, Heritage property. And, uh, you know, it's, it's unique in Manoa. In fact, it's unique in this side of the island as far as I know, yeah. 
So are you participating in this, Kathy? This is a big project, isn't it? It is a big Kathy's project. Kathy's on the board I'm of on our the board of directors. directors. So I participate to the extent that I can. Uh -huh. And yeah, I have memory, many memories growing up there. Oh, sure. This yeah. is where you grew up. Kuali'i, isn't it? Kuali'i is yeah. the home that we've been that's living a... in for the last, since 1970, when Sam's grandmother passed away. Uh -huh. We moved in. What and was it named was, as Kuali'i? It must have been a long time ago. Named by Sam's gra grandparents <laughs> for the chief of Oahu. Before Kamehameha United, Kamehameha the first United, rule of the island. So can you talk to me a little about your, your family and the heritage that goes way back when? Well, Sam's great-grandmother was a woman from Kauai, and uh, she married Charles Montague Cook, Cook Sr., uh, Anna Race Cook. And she started the Honolulu Academy of Arts in 1927 All right. with her collection. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was already clear the family was going to get into art, eh? Yeah, yeah. In fact, there were a couple of paintings done by Robert Dampierre that were in our home when Sam's grandfather passed away. They were given to the Honolulu Academy of Arts, now the Honolulu Museum of Arts. So it really so defines the family. Mm -hmm. So we've been, and Sam just inherits that love of, of art from his great-grandmother or grandfather and and Kathy inherits that as well. From my parents? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you going to carry it forward? How important is it to you? Well, I've, al I've always loved, I've always had many friends that were artists. I studied art and art history extensively. Ah. Lived in Europe for about 10 years ah. and had a great time seeing art there. Sure. Well, that's for sure. Um, and. You're on I the track then. I'm you're you're uh, living out the destiny of the family, The Kathy. gallery is an extension of my parents' love for Hawaiian art, for sure. Here you go. It's a great repository, a special museum, if you will, and more. Can I end with uh, saying how to get the book? Yeah, please. How do um, we get the book? Okay, it's a, on sale at, in Kathy's gallery. Of course. Open on Tuesday through Friday afternoons from okay. 1 to 5. Manoa Heritage Center. Mon Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30 uh, at Nohea Gallery and Namea. Namea. And Namea, yeah. Uh -huh. And also the Honolulu Museum of Art. All the perfect places to carry about. it. Or even easier, just go online to manoaheritagecenter.org, order it through PayPal. Yep. Yeah. You could come to my house, pick it up, <laughs> or you could, well, we'll mail it to you, all included in the $100 oh, that's great. price. That's great, great. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Mary, I wanted to ask you uh, to read a piece from that book. Oh, I'd be so happy to. So we can to. feel the, uh, the, the roar of the grease paint and the smell of the crowd. I'm going to read you what uh, David Forbes has written here. Sam and Mary Cook have assembled at Kuli'i, their Manoa Valley home, a cultural treasure unsurpassed by any other private collection in the island. This collection of paintings, drawings, and prints of the Hawaiian Islands uniquely reflects the Kama'aina appreciation the Cooks have for various locales throughout the islands, including, including generation-long associations with the people and places and a love of legends and history. In this book, historian and bibliographer David Forbes presents a selection of the collection's finest works. Yes. And, and that, that describes the intersection of the art and the history, a perfect place to be. So I also want to offer you guys the opportunity to speak to the public. They're right there at camera one, the red light is on, and tell them what they should be looking for in this book, what the experience of looking at this collection of, um, you know, of feeling the history and feeling the art, what it should be like for them. Kathy? Well, it's a magnificent chronological collection again, of 18th and 19th century art. And um, David Forbes is one of the finest writers in the state. He wrote the Hawaii National Bibliography uh, and um, Encounters in Paradise, which really put this type of art on the map. Um, I think just those interested in art and history and the people of Hawaii would get great joy. and satisfaction out of reading the book. I, I've looked at it and I t totally agree with that. Everyone that sees it has to have one. <laughs> so, Mary, you're, you're, you're the anchor man now. Uh -huh. 
Will you tell them what you'd like them to see and understand from looking at this book, what the experience should be like? Well, it's just a wonderful history of Hawaii, and uh, it's beautiful photographs taken by Shuzo Uemoto from the museum. And you can't put it down once you get started. That's you have true. to just read till the end. That's true. Punctuated with the beautiful prints and beautiful paintings. Right. It's it's a it's a an intersection. A, it's a, conne a connection. It's a connection of the the history of the collection which you have spent your life building with your husband. Uh, it's a it's an appreciation of the art, uh, and somehow it also connects to today. That's why I like this show because all the pieces connect: the historical, the art which is timeless, your gallery which is now, all together. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming down. It's been wonderful. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us, Jay. <laughs>